be like, hey, go make a layup. <laughs> she's gonna make my life easy. Um, but she's incredible. But the thing about I love about her is like she's just a great person. Like she loves the game. She knows the game. She supports the game. Um, and she has a smile that affects a lot of people and brings a lot of joy to people when they watch her. So I can't wait to be her teammate again. Uh, Caitlin, in the center section, last row to your right. Hey, Caitlin Dillman from Sportico. Uh, just curious about you know all the sponsorships you've had and all the NIL deals. How do you plan to maximize this business opportunity now that you are a professional basketball player in the WNBA? How do you plan to carry that on? And also, what has been the biggest piece of business advice that somebody has given you uh, going into this next phase in your basketball career? Honestly, like if I'm being completely honest, I feel like it doesn't change a ton from how I lived my life over the course of the last year. Um, Sponsorships stay the same. Uh, the people around me, you know, agents and whatnot, have been able to help me and guide me through the course of the last year. And I don't know if I would be in this moment if it wasn't for a lot of them. And my mom has done a lot. My dad has done a lot. Um, so I think that's just the biggest thing. Of you know, the advice I would say is just like lean on the people around you. Like I don't have to do every single thing. And I think at the same time, like in college, I always said like. My main focus is on basketball. That's why I've had every other opportunity in my life is because of the way I carry myself, the way I play the game. Um, and going into my professional career, I plan to do the same exact thing. It's like my focus is solely on basketball, um, you know, being the best I can. I don't have to do school anymore. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> I do have to get my degree. I graduate on May 14th. But other than that, um, you know, my 110% focus is on basketball. And, you know, when I do that really well and carry myself really well, everything kind of just takes care of itself. Uh, Caitlin, staying in the center, center section, the last row, right in front of the screen. Hey, Caitlin, uh, you made it work with the New York Times. Um, how is the filming event for the ESPN documentary um, with uh, uh, Omaha? And, like, you think that'll help get people to watch the WBA more, get, like, a behind-the-scenes look? Absolutely, and uh, you know, I'm actually an executive producer on the show, which has been kind of fun for myself. And when Peyton Manning reached out, obviously, it's his production company, I was a little skeptical at first, but I was like, I don't know if I really want to let people into my life like that. I've never really done it. But um, the way this year has unfolded, the way, um, you know, obviously Camilla and Kiki, the seasons that they had, I mean, you can't script it any better. It's been absolutely incredible for women's basketball. And if you're a women's basketball fan or you're not a women's basketball fan, I encourage you to watch the show when it comes out. I've seen bits and pieces. It's absolutely amazing. Um, it really allows you to understand the student athlete for way more than just a basketball player. And I think that's really important. I think that's gonna allow um, you know, fans of the W, fans of college, to really you know, understand what they go through, but love them even more for who they are and what they do and what they're about. So um, I'm excited for everybody to see it, and it's been a special project. Uh, Caitlin, to your right, second row, all the way to the right. Hi, Kaylin Alexa, Phil, who, yes, fan, congratulations. Uh, the Fever haven't been to the postseason since Tamika Catchings was on the team. You've had some time to think about what your role could be like in, in Indiana. How important or how excited are you about the prospect of, of hopefully getting the Fever back in the playoffs with this young core that you're building around? Yeah, absolutely, and that's definitely our goal is to get back to championship habits, and I think it's so cool for me, like I vividly remember um, my freshman year during the bubble, we played Kentucky in the round of 32 and Tamika was on the game and I was like tweaking out. Like I couldn't believe she was calling one of my games. Like somebody I idolized, um, somebody that I loved and somebody that is not only a great basketball player and everything that she did, but she's a tremendous person. Um, and I just think that speaks to the organization as a whole and everything they do is so first class. And I'm very lucky to be, be going there uh, to an organization that really loves women's basketball. I mean, you see it today. I think they had 17,000 tickets claimed to just watch the draft. I think that shows the excitement in Indianapolis. Um, it's a great basketball city. Obviously, what the Pacers have been able to do this year is special in the playoffs. And um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm just excited. And like you said, there's a lot of young talent on the team. And you know, just getting back to the playoffs and doing everything we can to win a lot of basketball games is certainly the goal. Caitlin, to your left in the first row. Hi, Shara Taylor, New York Beacon. Congratulations. Thanks. Can you take us through the emotions of being the number one all-time scorer in the NCAA to the emotions you felt when you heard your name called today? Yeah, honestly, like, I feel like this was definitely a little bit more emotional for me, and I think that's because, like, when you're in the heat of competition, like, you don't have time to, like, really feel your emotions. Like, you're so competitive and you're so fiery, like, you're not really worried about all that. And I think that was, like, the biggest thing through my career is, like, First of all, I was able to have a lot of closure in the way my career ended and uh, everything that was, I was able to do. Obviously, I played the maximum number of games I could play my senior year and 
obviously we didn't win, but um, you know I feel like you did everything you can uh, to be in that moment and compete as hard as you can. But when you know when you're kind of just sitting at a table waiting for your name to be called, I think that really allows the emotions to feed you, and you're with your family. Like obviously playing a basketball game, I'm not out there with my family, so sharing that moment with them and, and enjoying it and people that have really had my back and believed in me more than anyone is, is super special. All right, for our last question, we're going to turn to Zoom. Jeff, Linda, Jeff, go ahead. Hey, Caitlin, congratulations. Um, just, uh, um, you're, you're going to a basketball crazy state in, in Indiana. Indiana is basketball. Basketball is Indiana. Just uh, your thoughts on being part of that. Well, I know the Indiana Hoosiers didn't love me too much during my career, but hopefully we can turn a lot of them into fewer fans and if they're not already. Um, I think, you know, going to a state that supports not only basketball, but women's basketball. I mean, going and playing in front of, at Indiana, like the place is sold out. Um, you know, doing the same for the Fever is, you know, certainly our goal and having a lot of fans there every single night. and. For myself, I can't imagine a more perfect fit, uh, a better place for me to start my professional career, an organization that really just believes in women's basketball and wants to do everything the right way. Um, so I couldn't be you know, more excited to get there. Caitlin, thank you. Thanks. To our media, stay with us. We're going to be joined immediately by Cameron Brink. Hey, thank you. Once again, we're going to be joined right away by Cameron Brink. Let me know who has questions right away, if you would. 